All right, hi guys. A very good evening to all of you, and welcome back once again to our today's YouTube session, where well, uh, where I will be discussing some of the important MCQs on the topics like cardiovascular system, anti dyslipidemics, and renal system. So I hope all of you guys have uh, already attended the previous session that I was conducting on uh, on Academy platform, where I discussed very, uh, you know, very briefly around thirty to forty question from eight to nine p.m. Uh, the important topics and uh, PYQs for FMG and NEET PG both. So if you have missed it, go ahead and watch it. The recorded session is already there, and we'll be starting with our live session here. So please let me know if I'm clearly audible and visible, so I could start the session immediately. All the students, those who are live right now, please give me a quick confirmation if I'm clearly audible and visible, and we will immediately start. Am I audible and visible to all of you guys? आयशा जयश्रुति सोनू एंड ऑल द अदर स्टूडेंट्स Okay, great. So, quick reminder to all of you guys that if you are subscribing to an academy, please do not forget to use the code Pharma Ten to avail a ten percent off in your subscription. Not only ten percent. Uh, right now, an academy is offering a huge discount of around twenty percent for any student who is going to uh, get this subscription. So, if you are buying it now, you'll be getting a twenty percent subscription. This is uh, for the next few days. Where an academy has extended offer till um, June thirty. Till June thirty, you can use the same code that I have told you, which is Pharma ten, and you can actually avail a twenty percent off, a massive twenty percent off. You can use, uh, you, you can avail, you can use this for buying an an academy sub, uh, subscription, or you can also use it for buying uh, iconic subscription. So iconic will be an academy plus prep ladder both. This will be your iconic subscription. <coughs> We have currently launched uh, one of the batches uh, that is for NEET PG 2023 batch. This is a nine month course which will which has started in June. In this, I will be taking care of pharmacology. Pharmacology will be covered in around 52 to 54 hours. do remember it's a comprehensive course along with me the other team uh, faculty members are enlisted here they will be taking their respective subjects as well pharmacology in this one i'll be covering or i'll be starting in the month of august pharma will be started in the month of august another batch specially designed for our student those who are you know uh, planning to write the exam again we are calling it as a tnd batch Especially designed for our older student, repeater students. So this is a six-month course in which test and discussion form me. Every subject will be discovered, uh, sorry, discussed. And in this pharma, I'll be taking care in around fourteen to sixteen hours. This is the time that is dedicated. So around seven to eight session, each session will be having two hours each. That will be a good amount of time for test and discussion, uh, keeping in mind the duration that we have. <coughs> Iconic subscription definitely the prices are going up soon, so you guys can take a good advantage of this one and do subscribe. Do not forget to use the code that I have told you already, which is Pharma Ten. Currently, you can get a twenty percent off right now. Instead of getting usual ten percent, you can avail a twenty percent off. Okay, so after this, I think all of you guys are ready, and we can start our first question for the day. Okay, so read the question very carefully. When nitrates are used in combination with other drugs for the treatment of angina, which one of the following combination results in additive effect on the variable specified? So, what are the variables specified? These are the variables that are specified. So, on these variable effect, which of the following drug can create an additive effect? Which of the following can create an additive effect? Go ahead, please provide your answers. All of you, please. beta blocker and nitrates on the end diastolic pressure
beta blocker and nitrates on heart rate calcium channel blocker and beta blockers on ca on cardiac force calcium channel blocker and nitrates on the heart rate go ahead please if two drugs are given these are the uh, variable specified provide your answer please a b c d any of them all the student those who are live can provide so first you have to understand the question then only you will be in a position to mark it anyone so beta blocker and nitrates if it is given together see beta blocker will be decreasing the heart rate and nitrates so it will have no effect on this end diastolic cardiac volume end diastolic cardiac size do remember this then beta blocker and nitrate on the heart rate will it have additive effect think will it have additive effect or not beta blocker decreasing the heart rate nitrates will actually uh, you know beta blocker decrease the heart rate nitrates will actually cause reflex tachycardia calcium channel blocker and beta blocker on force of contraction calcium channel blocker will decrease beta blockers will also decrease so these two calcium channel blocker and beta blocker will have additive effect in fact calcium channel blocker and beta blocker therefore are actually contraindicated together this is one of the pattern of us mle question that that has been asked in one of the mle question previously now if you talk about any of the nitrates we know that nitrates will be causing vasodilatation and vasodilatation after vasodilatation there will be fall in the blood pressure and reflex tachycardia will be there so that is the logic that you can utilize for the force of contraction calcium channel blocker beta blocker they both will have an additive effect on the force so therefore they are contraindicated together they can cause heart block so i hope all of you guys have got the uh, trick here <coughs> the next one coronary micro deposit is a known side effect of which of the following drug which drug can cause coronary micro deposits chloroquine chlorpromazine quetiapine mi uh, amidron go ahead please in fact in the past i have discussed multiple questions in that i have given uh, ocular side effect of many drugs like we used to discuss 8 to 10 drugs ka summary and their important ocular side effect i hope you guys can mark it here as well can i expect a reply from you guys okay so dr sankdeep is studying a aisha is studying d other uh, other students please corneal micro deposits is a known side effect of chloroquine chlorpromazine quetiapine amiodron okay so cornea verticalata definitely yes hai na chloroquine mainly associated with side effect known as your bulls eye maculopathy we know that it will be causing a side effect known as your bulls eye maculopathy which is an example of the retinopathy theek okay. hai chlorpromazine has some effect on the corneal deposition yes but the term that we are using corneal uh, uh, verticalata or micro deposits they are mainly associated with amiodron quetiapine is associated with cataract quetiapine can cause side effect you know cataract corneal micro deposit will be amiodron now do remember that other uh, drugs that we have and their uh, ocular side effect so quickly can you guys tell me some drugs that you can recall which is having certain ocular side effect like i can start very simply with the steroids so in just 2 minutes i'll be summarizing all of them steroids if you are going to use topical it can cause glaucoma and it can cause cataract if you are going to use via the systemic route so we used to remember by the mnemonic gtcs glaucoma by topical and cataract by the systemic route anyone else you guys can tell me apart from this gtcs ho gaya apart from steroid can you recall of any other drugs so let's say i have told you also amiodron that is causing corneal micro deposits you must have heard about a drug known as thioridazine one of the low potency antipsychotics typical antipsychotics that is a d2 blocker 
दे आर एसोसिएटेड विद द रेटिनल पिगमेंटेशन इन फैक्ट एमोंग द एंटी साइकोटिक्स दिस इज द ओनली ड्रग दैट इज कॉजिंग रेटिनल पिगमेंटेशन वी कॉल इट एज अ ब्राउनिंग ऑफ विजिट्स ब्राउनिंग ऑफ विजिट्स दिस इज वन ऑफ द ऑक्यूलर साइड इफेक्ट थायरोडाजीन then we are having sildenafil sildenafil can lead to cyanopsia the blue vision so remember sildenafil ko hum common names mein blue pill ke naam se jante hain blue pills leading to blue vision cyanopsia digoxin on the other hand will be leading to xanthopsia which is an yellow vision ethambutol as rightly mentioned by some of you that is leading to your optic neuritis that explains the fact that why it is contraindicated in pediatric age less than 20 year okay cutiapin causing cataract chlorpromazine can cause also they can deposit on the cornea but the term that we are using mainly micro deposits or cornea verticillata we use it for the amedron there are other drugs also that can cause uh, cornea verticillata any other drug that you guys can think of which is causing ocular side effect any other drugs like for example pioglitazone pioglitazone is known to cause cystoid macular edema that is also one of the uh, very common side effect cystoid macular edema levodopa can actually precipitate angle closure glaucoma or any drug that is causing my you know mitrasis they can precipitate angle closure glaucoma that is another thing and most of the question that i have summarized here they have been asked in the past theek okay? hai very good vigabetrin also it was asked in 2020 aims examination as well there are the gaba trans aminase inhibitor vigabetrin is one of the gaba trans aminase inhibitor they are going to cause peripheral retinal atrophy because of the peripheral retinal atrophy as a side effect the visual field become narrowed down and we call them as a tubular vision or tunnel vision so vision agar because there is a atrophy from the periphery they will be leading to tunnel vision or tubular vision tunnel vision or tubular vision uh, dr sankdeep mitriatics can precipitate glaucoma not the mitria uh, uh, not the myotics myotics can be used like pilocarpine being a myotics can be used ठीक है अबाउट ग्लोकोमा एंड कैटरैक्ट दैट यू आर मेंशनिंग आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन हियर ठीक है वी हैव वन मोर ड्रग हुज नेम एज फनी करेंट ब्लॉकर आई कुड रिकॉल वन मोर फनी करेंट ब्लॉकर कैन यू गैस टेल मी फनी करेंट ब्लॉकर वट इज द नेम ऑफ ड्रग ईवा इज अ फनी नेम ईवा Eva Bradin. Eva Bradin is one of the bradycardia inducing drug. It will be having visual side effect because such funny currents are also present over retina. The funny current, the pre-potential slow sodium current that are present over the uh, nodal tissue of the heart, they are also present in the uh, retina, and they will be leading to a uh, visual side effect that is known as your phosphines. Phosphines that will be decreasing the visual acuity actually. distorted images yeah? distorted images ko bolte distorted images theek hai so phosphine naam se aap google pe search kar lijiyega maine regular class mein image dikhaya bhi hua hai how does the phosphine look like so i think if you can see around 10 drugs ka 10 se zyada drug ka humne ek bar quickly dekh liya ocular side effect and this is how the examiner is uh, fond of asking especially in the neat pg they ask you to do the match the following and also in inict okay the anti dyslipidemic drug evolo cumab act by evolo cumab act by there is so option c will be your just a minute please option c i'll change here evolo cumab that we have now you mark evolo cumab 
देर इज वन मोर ड्रग्स फ्रॉम द सेम क्लास दैट इज एलिरो क्यूमाप ठीक है एलिरो क्यूमाप इवोलो क्यूमाप डू रिमेंबर एलिरो क्यूमाप एंड इवोलो क्यूमाप दे आर द पीसीएस के नाइन इनिवेटर प्रो प्रोटीन कन्वर्टेज सप्टिलीसिन कैक्सिन टाइप नाइन बिकॉज ऑफ द पीसीएस के नाइन इनिवेशन देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन द री यूज ऑफ एल डी एल रिसेप्टर एल डी एल रिसेप्टर विच वॉज अंडर गोइंग डिग्रेडेशन बाई पीसीएस के नाइन that was not allowing it for the reuse normally one ldl receptor can be reused around 150 times but because of this pcsk9 a protein that was promoting the degradation of ldl receptor they were not being reused alero cumab so i used to say ali is the name of a guy who is evolved as a pcs is and pcs are the two uh, higher polish polish job so is and pcs ali is evolved as pcs Okay, so in this you have to choose. There are five options. You have to choose any uh, one of them. So these are the options from where you are going to choose. You have to choose about desmopressin. They are used in nocturnal embryos. Can be used in the pulseless cardiac arrest. Preferred in nephrogenic diabetes and sepsis can be used in the treatment of von Willebrand disease. Can be used in the treatment of hemophilia A. Go ahead, please. Which one do you think is the correct answer? Take your time. From A B C D. From here you will be choosing. Dr. Priya, Pooja, Aisha, Sankdeep, Sharin, Peterson, Jay Shruti. All of you, please try. Desmopressin. It's like a synthetic vasopressin. We all know for sure that synthetic vasopressin, desmopressin, has been the drug of choice in central diabetes insipidus. So, patient of the central diabetes insipidus often present with the nocturnal enuresis, right? We do not have any E option. These are the options, guys. A, B, C, D. One and two only. One two four only. One two three only. One two four five only. Okay. So I I believe most of you are guy. Uh, most of you are marking correct. There are few that are wrong as well. So first of all, I'll give you the correct answer. One two four five. One two and four five. Why three is not preferred in nephrogenic? No no. It is the preferred in central diabetes insipidus. In a nephrogenic, we use thiazides. Now some of the central diabetes patient can. present with the nocturnal enuresis or often present with the nocturnal enuresis this agent they increase the up regulation of von willebrand factor and hemophilia uh, uh, factor 8 the one that is involved in the hemophilia a that is why they can also be used in a von willebrand disease and hemophilia a patients as well okay earlier according to acls protocol they were used as an alternative to adrenaline not the newer one but earlier it was used as an alternative to adrenaline in a patient with a pulseless cardiac arrest alternative to adrenaline they were used in a patient with a pulseless cardiac arrest clear right eh? so they were used can be used earlier it was under the guideline as well but yes can be used it is effective preferred in nephrogenic diabetes just no It's for central yes so 3 is not the one so 1 2 4 5 is a correct answer Okay, you have to find out a true statement about loop diuretics. You have to find out a true statement about the loop diuretics. So this is one of the all-time favorite question for me. And whenever I ask student, uh, often get confused. So if you have attended my classes before, definitely you will be able to mark this correctly. true statement about the loop diuretic act by blocking nacl co transporter at the loop of henle act by blocking nak 2 cl co transporter at the dct preferred in patient with the hypocalcemia aspirin can blunt the diuretic effect of loop diuretics aspirin can blunt the diuretic effect of loop diuretics go ahead please tell me what do you think could be the possible answer Okay, so Aisha is in favor of D. Jai Shruti, Prabhakar, all of you in favor of D. Others are in favor of 
B, Priya, Vishnu, B, Pooja, D. Okay, so let's rule out one by one. See, loop diuretics, we know for sure a very good example or prototype drug that we have is furosemide. It is one such drug that is acting by inhibiting NAK2CL transporter, co-transporter inhibitor at the thick ascending limb of loop of L. That is where they work. They act by inhibiting NAK2CL co-transporter at the thick ascending limb of loop of L. Now read the option. Act by blocking NACL. Gone. It, block, it blocks NAK2CL. Act by blocking NAK2CL, of course. But does it block at the DCT? Guys, DCT is a thiazide. Kaam karta hai. Preferred in patient with a hypocalcemia, this loop diuretics that we are having, they themselves promote loss of calcium. Therefore, they can actually be preferred in a hypercalcemia. If there is a hypercalcemia patient, we can use. Because they are causing loss of calcium in a hypocalcemia patient, if you can give, there can be worsening of the symptom. Hypocalcemia in itself is an emergency condition and if you give a drug which is further causing hypocalcemia, that will lead to multiple complications including mortality as well. So it will not be preferred in a hypocalcemia but yes can be preferred in a hypercalcemia. Aspirin can blunt the diuretic effect. Aspirin actually being a NSAID can blunt the diuretic effect of loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics. NSAIDs what they are going to do, they will be actually acting as a COX inhibitor. They are going to act as a COX inhibitor and that will be decreasing the prostaglandin level. We all know that prostaglandins itself promote, you know, uh, the renal blood flow. So when the renal blood flow will reduce, the diuretic effect automatically will reduce. If the prostaglandin level is decreased, the renal blood flow will autom automatically decrease. So the only one which is correct here is aspir aspirin blunting the diuretic effect. So do remember aspirin not only can blunt the diuretic effect of loop but also can blunt the diuretic effect of thiazides as well. Reason dono ke liye aapko bata diya. So correct answer is rightly mentioned by most of you that is D. I hope all of you guys have got this. Next one. Okay, so what do we use here in, the, in a question like this? We often call it as a rule of exclusion. Sometimes we utilize the rule of exclusion. NAK2CL, if you look at it, out. Out. Hypocalcemia automatically. Even if you do not know and you have the rule of exclusion, you know the rule of exclusion, you can easily rule out option A, B, and C. Very carefully, these options are placed just to confuse you. And these are always and always available. In some question, you will have one distractor, and in other question, you will have two to three distractor. So, question like this, which is talking about loop of Henle as well, which is talking about NAK2CL as well, which is talking about calcium level, there are three distractors. So, there are high chances that you might end up making silly mistake in this. Anna? No, patient in gout wale jo patients hote hain, in a patient with gout, this aspirin actually inhibit or interfere with the uric acid ka excretion. So, it inhibit the uric acid ka excretion. That is why in a gout patient we do not give this. Actually in the lower doses, this is the action. But at the very high doses, they promote excretion as well. But at those doses, aspirin leads to multiple other side effect including salicylism okay so in a dose like four to five gram in a day they will be increasing the uric acid and that can also lead to multiple other uh, toxic effect of aspirin okay next one uh, true about potassium aspirin diuretic so use the same rule of exclusion and see if you are able to solve this question as well only diuretic acting at the luminal side of the tubule so true about potassium sparing diuretics let me tell you the name spirinolactone so now i have given the name al al already spirinolactone so you do not get confused so i am talking about a drug spirinolactone which of the following is true it is the only diuretic acting on the luminal side of the tubule aplerinone can cause gynecomastia and infertility 
amyloride is preferred in treatment of SIADH. electron is one of the potassium sparing that we have. Candrinone is a metabolite of spirinolactone. Use the rule of exclusion and you can find. See most of the diuretics will be acting at the luminal end. Spirinolactone which happens to be one of the aldosterone receptor antagonist they will be acting at the basolateral side towards the interstitial side. Okay. So this is not the only diuretic acting at the luminal side. In fact, the spinal electron act on the basolateral side. Other diuretics like, uh, you know, uh, loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics, they definitely act on the luminal side. Aplironone can cause gynecomastia. This gynecomastia and infertility decrease in the, or infertility could be a side effect of spironolactone. Not with the aplironone. Aplironone is an alternative drug. It will not cause this side effect. Amyloride is preferred in SIADH. For patient with the SIADH syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, we will be using V2 antagonist. V2 antagonist that we are going to use are Conivaptan or Tolvaptan. These are also used in heart failure patient. In a patient with a hyponatremia as well, conivaptan available by the IV route, tolvaptan available by the oral route. So that is also a part of question. Now as I told you already, I gave you the hint already, the use uh, rule of exclusion, candrinone and there is one more known as 7-alpha spirolactone. What did I say? Candrinone, 7-alpha spirolactone guys, these are actually Spirolactone. These are actually one of the metabolite of spironolactone. These are going to have anti-androgenic effect. It is this anti-androgenic effect that is going to produce gynecomastia and infertility impotency. Okay. So correct answer that we have is D. Candrinone. Is it a metabolite of spironolactone? Yes. Aplerinone also causes gynecomastia? No. In fact, aplerinone is an alternative to spironolactone if the patient is developing the gift. What is the gift? The gift to the mankind we always say, you know, among certain drugs that is causing this gift, spironolactone is one of them. Okay. Yes, very good doctors. So we can take the next one. Which of the following is the preferred drug for the treatment of uncomplicated grade 2 hypertension in a 50 year old male? Go ahead please. This is one of the PYQ of the NEAT PG. If I am not wrong, it was 2019. Go ahead, please. Something like this has been asked. Preferred for the treatment of uncomplicated grade 2 hypertension. In a 50 year old male. Spirinolactone, triamterine, furosemide, chlorothalidone. Now, first and foremost that we know that among the first line drug, we have A, C and D. A stands for ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker. C stands for calcium channel blocker and D stands for diuretics. A, C and D. Okay. Spironolactone, again, a drug that is mainly utilized in resistant cases. Where do we utilize? In the resistant cases where at least three antihypertensive drugs are not responding even at the optimal dose, we will be preferring spironolactone. Again, triamterine is a potassium sparing uh, diuretics. Furosemide, do remember it is a very potent diuretics and utilized in emergency condition usually wherever you want to do immediate decongestion, you want to decrease the fluid volume, you want to decrease the congestion, you can use. Acute heart failure, pulmonary edema, in that condition you can use. But for long term usage, we will be using any of these. One of the drugs that we are going to prefer in this patient of ours will be chlorothalidone guys. Chlorothalidone. Another thing that you should know that furosemide is a very very potent diuretics. So if you are going to use it for long time, 
they will be producing you know a very high level of natriuresis so wherever there is a loss of sodium there will be loss of water as well so natriuresis and loss of fluid this natriuresis actually increases the compensatory increase in the water and sodium ka reabsorption from the proximal part of the nephron theek okay. hai so that it further it can further precipitate the fluid volume and this drug will stop working so we usually give in in acute scenario for some time yes we can use but as a maintenance therapy we prefer the drugs as first line ac inhibitor arb calcium channel blocker or the diuretics preferably thiazide diuretics that is also a important diuretics and preferably thiazide diuretics theek okay? hai that is there secondary or primary both type of hyperaldosteronism dr prabhakar we can use spironolactone aldosterone receptor antagonist next hypertensive patient on ac inhibitor visited your opd with new onset fetal edema serum creatinine level seem to be 3.2 the most preferred ac inhibitors so all of them are ac inhibitor as you can see all of them are ending with the prills all of them are ending with the prills so which one will be most preferred thiazides are relatively slow acting diuretic slow and long acting compared to loop which is potent and short acting diuretics in a hypertension like situation we need where we are needing the maintenance therapy we need to give uh, the longer acting drugs so they are slow acting and longer acting compared to the, uh, loop diuretics which are very potent so there is a sudden fall in the fluid level and after some time there is a compensatory increase in the sodium and water carrier absorption isliye we are going to use them uh dr sankdeep i hope i was able to clarify your doubts so you see all of the all of the ac inhibitors or ac inhibitors are mainly excreted renally this information i came across while i was going through cadson that all of them are excreted renally except fosinopril or moxipril so i used to tell you that do remember your radio fm radio fm so all are excreted renally except fosino and moxipril except fosino and moxipril so moxipril is the correct answer in a patient where there is already high serum creatinine level theek okay? hai so fosinopril and moxipril will be most suitable it will be most suitable for this patient okay then another thing that we should know that all the ac inhibitors all are actually pro drugs there is exception here as well except your captopril and lisinopril and we remember by the mnemonic anterior cruciate ligament that all are ac inhibitors ex- uh, pro drug except capto and lisinopril acl here radio fm yeah all right okay i think this is a very simple question but still uh, i hope none of you will get wrong here all of the following side effects are seen with lisinopril except lisino all of the following are side effect of lisinopril except please go ahead cough dysgeusia which is a taste alteration hypokalemia hepatotoxicity cough dysgeusia hypokalemia hepatotoxicity yes dr arti prabhakar c sankdeep d j j shruti c all right so i hope all of you guys have got the uh, point here pooja is telling d
see ACE inhibitor actually or any of the RAS system inhibitor as a matter of fact any of the RAS system inhibitor as a matter of fact will be causing a side effect known as your hyperkalemia so when we say RAS system inhibitor renin inhibitor and this question was asked in the recent NEET PG examination as well renin inhibitor like aliskiren then we also can give AC inhibitor like any of the prills like lisinopril, captopril or angiotensin receptor blocker like any of the sartans, low sartan, tell me sartan or we also have aldosterone receptor antagonist like spironolactone, aplerinone they are also known as your potassium spirin diuretics so all of them that are having RAS system inhibiting capacity, property they all can cause hyperkalemia so in a simple term remember that so they will not be causing hypokalemia they can cause hyperkalemia that explains the fact why the RAS system inhibitors like let's say uh, uh, AC inhibitors or ARB they are not given together they can cause severe hyperkalemia this hyperkalemia risk is further high if the patient is on potassium supplement do remember that other side effects are seen cough like dry cough being the most common side effect of these AC inhibitors alright so C is the correct answer for this moving on which of the following angiotensin receptor blocker has the highest affinity for AT1 receptor AT1 is angiotensin 1 receptor another thing that you should know this is the one that act via GQ its action is mediated via G protein by the name of GQ so which ARB has the highest affinity so like for example if you give all of them together low sartan, azyl sartan, candy sartan, tell me sartan if you give all of them together which will have higher chances for binding with the AT1 receptor which of them will have higher chances for binding with the AT1 receptor go ahead please okay good so candy definitely is the correct answer another thing that you should know that this is also an FDA approved drug for prophylaxis of migraine FDA is approved for the prophylaxis of migraine tell me satan is one of them which is having the longest half life and it also upregulate the level of PPAR gamma Okay. so like pyoglitazone they are also having PPR gamma agonistic property which is going to increase the insulin sensitivity this is going to act via nuclear receptor any of the PPR gamma uh, or any of the PPR alpha they act via nuclear receptor low sartan ke baare mein do teen baat hain jo bar bar poochta hai they lower down everything they have the lowest T half life alright they lower down the uric acid level ok they also lower down the platelet aggregation because of their thromboxane A2 inhibiting property they also lower down the LDL level recent studies are also telling that this low sartan also has PPAR gamma agonistic property so PPAR gamma we always say TIL in the same order tell me sartan, irbe sartan, lo sartan highest abhi bhi tell me sartan hai and this tell me sartan wala question has been asked in the aims a couple of times already Dr. Priya that is what I have written yes they have a thromboxane A2 inhibiting property ok alright so I hope this question I have already uh, given the answer to this question which of the following ARB can increase the insulin sensitivity so there are 5 ARBs 5 sartans are given and you will be choosing the answer any of the 5 ABCD here down there so from the options down there 1 and 3 only 3 only 1 3 4 only all of the above you have to choose please go ahead I have already given you the answer for this one 
you just have to recall what i taught on the previous slide angiotensin receptor blocker that is having ppar peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma this is mainly by til ye to bataya tha til til so l t i t i l so 1 3 and 4 1 3 and 4 Okay. So questions like this can always be there because these are very definite informations. So you have to choose a false statement. All of the following are true about angiotensin receptor blocker, except choose your answer, please. Candy sartan can be used in migraine prophylaxis. Low sartan can reduce the LDL level. Irbe sartan can induce PPAR alpha receptor. Candy sartan has maximum affinity for eighty one. I just taught you this. Every information that is given in these four option has been discussed in past five seven minutes. We have discussed guys. So majority of you are going ahead with the C. That is correct. You guys have picked it. So PPAR gamma, not PPAR alpha. Peroxisome proliferator activator receptor alpha. This will be mainly PPAR gamma agonistic will be mainly your fibrates like phenofibrate, beza fibrate, gem fibrozil, and uh, the other fibrates that are going to increase the level of lipoprotein lipase, which will be causing breakdown of the triglyceride. ट्राइग्लिसराइड का ब्रेक डाउन करेगा सो हाइपर ट्राइग्लिसराइडीमिया में दिस विल बी प्रिफर्ड फाइब्रेट्स सो दैट विल बी पेयर अल्फा डू रिमेंबर दैट सो इन दिस वन यू विल बी चूजिंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग द एंटी एरिथमिक ड्रग दिस इज अ टिपिकल आई एन आई सी टी करेंटली आई विल बी टेलिंग और पी जी आई गो एट प्लीज Which of the following is correct regarding the class of anti-arrhythmic drug? Class one, tisoprolamide. One B, flicanide. Class four, diltiazem. Class three, lidocaine. Then option E is A and C both. Pioglitazone, Doctor Sankhdeep Mitra is a PPAR gamma. Okay, so is it A and C both? I think all of you guys are marking the same, so we'll go ahead with the answer. A and C both is the correct answer, of course. See, why D is not the correct one? Lidocaine is coming from class one B antihistamine drug, and what do I tell you from one B? One B, जो दरवाजे के बाहर खड़ा है, and they all like to phone. So it says they all like to phone me. I am very important. and why am i important because i am utilized in almost all the ventricular tachycardia majority of the physicians are choosing me and that is why they all like to phone me so that's the story that you have to remember all like to phone me that means lidocaine this is the drug of choice in majority of the ventricular tachycardia in fact digoxin induced arrhythmia also it can be used as a drug of choice tocanide phenytoin maxillitin So they all like to phone me. Okay, class four diltiazem. Of course, it's a correct one. Class one B flicanide. It's actually class one C flicanide, propafenone, morisizine. Okay, yeah, these are the class one C <coughs> and and canide also. Diazepamide is actually class one A antihistamine drug. So saying one or one A, they are correct also. So this is also correct. So A and C only are the correct answer. Option B and D are wrong, guys. So A and C are the correct. ठीक है क्लास वन ए एंटी एथमिक ड्रग दैट वी हैव इज क्विनिडीन प्रोकेनामाइड क्विनिडीन प्रोकेनामाइड एंड दाइसोपिरामाइड 
so this is these are your dasi is always there with queen and prince so queen prince dasi they are a grade people always in the a grade theek hai b grade ye bahar khada hai they all like to phone me theek hai 55 year old patient treated in emergency for arrhythmia later he developed neurological symptom like paresthesias very typical question slurring of speech light headedness conversion as well so an anti arrhythmic drug causing conversion which of the following anti arrhythmic drug could have caused such symptom esmolol lendiolol amiodarone lidocaine so mainly neurological side effect is seen here Try answering this. Not very difficult one. Okay, so that's actually correct response, which most of you are giving actually. Amiodarone has certain side effect, like thyroid abnormality, liver toxicity. so it can even cause fluctuation of hepatic enzymes hai na qt prolongation pulmonary fibrosis corneal micro deposits theek hai lidocaine is the one that is known to cause such neurological side effect it's a reported and well documented side effect Paresthesias, slurred speech, lightheadedness, anti-arrhythmic drug, and it has been asked in the past as well. You can take the next one. Which of the following anti-arrhythmic drug monitoring with spirometry? So, what is spirometry? If you know, you can crack this. Monitoring with spirometry is required in sotalol, amiodarone, quinidine, lignocaine. So, lignocaine major side effect apart from nausea and vomiting. I told you. is the neurological side effect quinidine the most common side effect guys is going to be diarrhea so among all the patient those who are receiving this 30 to 50% of them will be receiving diarrhea other can also be nausea and vomiting qt prolongation qt prolongation hypoglycemia postural hypotension due to alpha on blockade property this can be seen with quinidine so pulmonary fibrosis actually is caused by amiodarone so we can consider this one as an option theek okay? hai in this one you need to do the pulmonary function test which of the following anti anginal drug act by late sodium channel blockade we are about to finish an anti anginal drug leading to late sodium channel blockade evabradine ranolazine trimetazidine beta blockers <coughs> we are about to finish guys just one more question then we'll be done okay so i think uh, most of you are getting that correctly that is ranolazine ranolazine is the late sodium channel blockade and we all know that in a cardiac myocyte which has undergone ischemia the sodium channel is open and because of the opening of the sodium channel there is a late sodium channel which is open there will be influx of sodium that can actually increase the intracellular sodium load intracellular sodium is actually never physiological and that cannot be balanced because this myocyte has undergone injured you know injury theek okay? hai so because of that they cannot counter this problem and ultimately in order to balance this there will be activation of ncx that will try to pump out in response to this one if there is increase in the intracellular sodium they will be trying to get rid of this sodium and they will take in calcium 
intracellular calcium when increase they can produce diastolic wall stress so even during the diastole the heart will be unable to receive the oxygen which is needed ranulazine is actually going to block this one once it blocks this then there will be no increase in the intracellular sodium neither there will be increase in the sodium calcium exchanger so ultimately this intracellular calcium load the one that was causing diastolic wall stress will not be seen and that was the problem in angina we do not want the diastolic wall stress evabradine it's a funny current blocker it's a slow sodium influx inhibitor if blocker funny current blocker trimetazidine is a fatty acid oxidation inhibitor in fact ranulazine is also having fatty acid oxidation inhibiting property but do remember according to recent studies this is the main mechanism of action of ranulazine late sodium influx inhibitor is the late me main mechanism so this is again another image which is showing you the same representation which i have told you so in a ischemic cell in ischemic myocyte the increase in the late sodium influx will be increasing the intracellular sodium which is not physiological to balance that there will be activation of ncx sodium calcium exchanger which will be causing calcium overload intracellularly this can induce arrhythmia and this can even cause diastolic wall stress in a heart which is undergoing ischemia neither we want the arrhythmia nor we want diastolic wall stress that explains the fact why we are actually blocking this because when there is a diastolic wall stress the oxygen supply will reduce and of course increase in the consumption okay that will lead to or that will lead to the worsening of the ischemia so once you block this none of the cycle will start only so there will be no intracellular sodium no increase in the ncx and you know activity no calcium overload no diastolic wall stress none of them will take place so we should simply block ranulazine so this is one of the newer drugs for the mechanism of uh, for the, uh, no, for the ischemia or angina theek okay. hai last one enteresto is a recently approved agent for enteresto heart failure heat stroke hypersensitivity reaction hirsutism last question for the day where do we use entresto have you heard about this one or uh, even i'm not using what is it made of actually it's a drug that has got approved by this name but it's a combination of two drugs actually anyone Sacubitril actually is a naproxen inhibitor, also given the term as neutral endopeptidase inhibitor. Sacubitril with the valsartan. Sacubitril with the valsartan, which happens to be one of the angiotensin receptor blockers. So we say. एंजियोटेंसिन रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर एंड न्यूट्रल एंडोपेपिडेज इनबिटर कलेक्टिवली इनको बोलते हैं आर्नी क्या बोलते हैं इनको आर्नी वट इज आर्नी अ कम्बिनेशन ऑफ एंजियोटेंसिन रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर एंड न्यूट्रल एंडोपेपिडेज इनबिटर और नेप्रिलिसन इनबिटर एन आई मीन्स नेप्रिलिसन इनबिटर एन ई पी नेप्रिलिसन और न्यूट्रल एंडोपेपिडेज दैट द सेम थिंग नेप्रिलिसन एंड न्यूट्रल एंडोपेपिडेज दैट द सेम थिंग दे आर द सेम एंजाइम दैट इज कॉजिंग मेटाबोलिज्म द बी एन पी so they are mainly an approved drug fda approved already for the heart failure okay arni group very good dr priya it's one of the arni so arni is a combination of arb plus naprilisin inhibitor okay so this will be everything
which I actually wanted to discuss with all of you guys in our today's session of high yield MCQs in cardiovascular system and also in a renal system. I hope you guys have enjoyed the session and you have learned something new, you have revised this topic and uh, also you have learned what are the different points uh, where you are making the mistake and examiner can actually trick you. All of these we have uh, discussed here. Okay, so thank you very much to all of you. I'll be seeing you in upcoming classes. We are we have more classes coming, and if you are subscribing to An Academy, do not forget to use the code Pharma10 for the next three to four days till March. Uh, sorry, three June uh, 30. You are getting a 20% off. This is till June 30. Okay. So I'll see you around. Yes, there will be more free session in July as well, definitely. Thank you from Ethiopia. Oh, very uh, nice to see here from you. Welcome to the class. Dr. Gobezu Asifa. And I hope that you enjoy the pharma session here. We have multiple sessions in the past as well. And uh, we are more, you know, we are coming up with more such session on YouTube and also on the Unacademy app as well. Keep revising and I'll see you guys in the 